And the next item is 2101 Sneath Lane, and it's a request for a conditional use permit to construct a wireless communication system um, facility within a residential zoning district and a use permit to, to exceed the height limits for the district with, in which it is uh, located for sections 12200 and 1284-160 of the San Bruno Zoning Ordinance. And Verizon Wireless is the applicant. Staff report, please. Thank you. The, uh, the applicant actually is making some last minute revisions to the plan, so staff felt it was important that those revisions are reflected on the plans. Um, they are, so staff recommends that the Planning Commission continue use permit 08-025 to the next Planning Commission public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll now open the public hearing. Is there anybody from the commission that would like to, I'm sorry, from this uh, audience that would like to speak on this subject? Yes, you may, sir. Can you tell me where is this aerial is going to be put up in, Sne in Sneed Lane? Um, the staff report was uh, presented, but I, I don't know, uh, uh, planning director, if you'd like the staff report, sure. or would you like to answer that? Um, sure, it's, it's at the San Bruno uh, golf range, at the driving range, on one of the golf net poles. It would be mounted against the pole. Against the pole? Yeah. Is uh, will that not create a problem with the golf balls and all that kind of stuff? No, th there's, there's uh, the question was, well, there could be damage sustained from the golf, golf balls, and it's at a high enough point that that won't be the case. There's actually another one on site there, and it, it's worked well. So, um, and if it, if it is damaged, then that would be up for the Verizon to take care of and fix. And that's covered in the conditions of approval. Is it, is it, is it the height less than the poles? S same height. At the top of the pole, though. So it's the pole, and then it'll be it'll be above the pole. You have the pole, and then it's going to be above the pole. No, it, it would reach the maximum height of the pole, so it would not exceed the height of the pole. No, who is uh, San Bruno School District going to get a, a rent from that? I don't know the lease details. Um, the leaseholder is VB Golf, uh, the driving range site, and I'm not familiar with the lease details between VB Golf and the San Bruno Park School District. Through the chair, just a point of order. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to give the gentleman my staff report. It has a tremendous amount of detail in it. Oh, that'd be great. Thank and, you. And uh, would that help you? Yeah, later. Okay. Or okay. oh, whatever. But I'm concerned where. Not, it's not going to be close to any place where it harm, get cancer and all that kind of stuff. Thank you. Okay. I Thank think you. that your concerns are warranted, sir. And initially, when these, start, these, these sites started to be um, uh, erected, there was a lot of question, a lot of concern. And it was extremely researched. Uh, the commission and the staff particularly took a lot of time and care to be sure that they were completely in compliance it's been many, many years that this is taking place, and uh, at this particular time, they have to meet even higher criteria. And I want to reassure you that uh, that every every T is crossed, every dot I is dotted, and uh, and that if you have any any continuing questions, that the staff at the planning department would be very happy to address them. Now, there's another one of those things at the bottom. They say the garage, or the yeah, San Bruno. You turn in there to Rollingwood Drive. Uh, there's actually quite a few cell sites throughout. It's it's um, uh, throughout San Bruno. They've been coming before us for a number of years, and they are very strategically placed. They are camouflaged in, in various ways uh, behind uh, trees, Tree. in trees, uh, to make look like they're part of the environment. So the the communication systems have made every effort to comply with the request of the planning department and the planning commission. And I feel very confident to present to you uh, the confidence and, and to inform you that we really, uh, good work is done behind the scenes. My main concern is that of the cancer scare, cancer scare that will not affect anybody down the road? Well, sir, I certainly could not uh, answer that because I am not in that position to, you know, I'm not a medical practice, but I'm certain that you can direct that question to our planning director or to our city attorney. And more importantly, I would urge you to go to the planning department um, to ask those questions. But in the presentation that has been given to us over the number of years, those questions were very, you know, very clearly asked. 
and they have to meet compliance, federal regulations, uh, far beyond anything that we have. And so um, I feel reassured that uh, it has been done in the proper manner. Thank you. You're very welcome. Come through the chair. Yes. Um, in case you would like to, sir, in the event that you'd like to read over this material and study it, we are going. This is being continued, and we're going to hear this again next month. So feel free to study that and come back next month if you'd like. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Bishad. That's uh, an important point. Uh, hi. If you can please step to the microphone and speak directly into the mi microphone. State your name and the city in which you represent. Uh, hi. My name is uh, Hani Farag, and I am in uh, Quail Point uh, Homeowners Association. Uh, I know that the subject is not going to be discussed tonight, but uh, there are some issues that uh, even I started scrambling uh, some notes when I received the paper tonight, and I would like to put these uh, points on record yeah. till the time comes in order for the uh, commission to be uh, studying the subject. They are sporadic, not, ex not organized, uh, so please uh, bear with me and accept them as they Fine. are. Uh, the first item that uh, you know really came out at me was in the environmental assessment. The last uh, sentence says minor expansion to existing facilities. You use the term expansion if you are having a facility that would do the same function as the existing facility or the existing structure. Here we are dealing with something that has to do with wireless, with installations, with motor generator sets, and as the report would state with electromagnetic interference. So this, is, this cannot be classified as minor expansion to existing facility. It has to deal with many other aspects and codes and standards, etc. Uh, I understand there is, uh, would be a response to some of the concerns of the gentleman and other people would be, uh, has to do with the uh, electromagnetic interference, and there is a statement here says that the applicant submitted a radio frequency report, and uh, and is provided or prepared by a certain consulting engineer, and uh, it will be really nice if this would be available for the people who would be interested to see it and who can understand it. The uh, issues related to the uh, construction as it is, uh, the number one issue is back to the business part of this uh, proposal, which is how long this lease is going to be. The reason for this question is the same site had uh, several years ago, I believe if somebody here would have uh, a longer history in the subject, uh, would remember that there was a possibility of uh, uh, constructing a sport facility and people spend a lot of money, there was a litigation. Part of the litigation was dealt with by Quail Point Homeowners Association. If this is going to be a long-term lease, so the people in the area can judge if this would be the best bet they can accept for this facility, that there will be nothing else. If it is 15 years lease, 20 years lease, this would preclude any other activity and it will be judged on this merit. So uh, to judge it as a principle, it need to be accompanied with some kind of a business deal to give it a lifetime or a lifespan. Uh, some of the uh, scramble notes I have, one issue has to do with unmanned facility. The area on the ground is accessible at any time. There is no fence. You can put a sign, but this would not preclude animal or people from going there. How this could be dealt with need to be defined. In addition, there is currently, and I didn't realize this until I saw the drawing, there is a camera on the top of the pole. I, I didn't know that there is a camera. If there is a camera there and this camera is used for security, you need to have a light in order to use this camera. The situation now is at night, there is no light there. If you are going to use this camera as a part of the surveillance for the structure, then the issue of having light uh, would be considered. 
the other things has to do with the uh, emergency diesel generator set when you have a wireless communication you need to have the standby power supply it has to do with the amount of power generated the plans doesn't give cap or at least the plans I saw doesn't give a capacity uh, I would say anybody would appreciate if there's a diesel generator set this would be underground if there's a fuel tank would be double containment would be hidden, would be better protected than being like in a shack or something like this. When you have emergency diesel generator set, I know the codes for hospitals and hotels that need to be operated and tested. When this is going to happen, who is going to do it? People accept, of course, you will have some emissions when you try diesel generator set. Sir, I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, you'll have that opportunity to really speak thoroughly at that and, and get some response. We're not able to respond since it's being continued. And I also need to just remind you of a three minute, uh, sure. like three minute per applicant. So yeah, if, if uh, you Thank you for your time. I won't be able to come next time. It's really okay. hard to, uh, to make it to the city at this point. Mm -hmm. But I will follow up with uh, email and I consider everything I said now is on record. That's excellent. And we'd be happy to receive that email. Thank you very much for You're your You're very time. welcome. Goodbye. Through the chair. Can, yes. A quick question for staff. Would you remind us on these issues that come before us as far as wireless facilities? What are we allowed to look at and what are we not? Uh, I'll start with your, what, you're not al what we're not allowed to look at as a city. Um, what we're not allowed to look at is the health impacts from the emission frequencies and that's why as long as they meet the federal guidelines. So what we require is that they turn in that uh, the frequency report and if a certified engineer uh, if license engineers say that it's certified for the federal levels, that's taken out of the equation. So what we're looking at it from is a land use and an aesthetic standpoint. Thank you. Thank you. Right, and then the next item of business is, oh, that's, I'm sorry, I haven't even finished the last item of business. <laughs> uh, moving right along, uh, is there, I'd like to close the public hearing and bring it back to com uh, commission discussion. Through the chair. Commissioner Peterson. I'd like to move that we continue this to the next uh, time the applicant revises his plans. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.